Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the to the Winter School 2022. This is our fourth edition. Uh, on behalf of the organization, I would like to say thank you, Professor Antonio Soares, for accepting our invitation to give this webinar um, on health research data management. Why and how? This is a, a quite hot topic, given the ever increasing amount of data we have nowadays. And so, once again, it is a pleasure having Professor Tony Swashi. He's an executive manager of Synthesis and responsible for the knowledge uh, uh, management. management unit of the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Port. So, thank you once again, Tony. Please go okay. ahead. So, hello, uh, welcome to you all. Thank you to Professor Hernani for the invitation. Uh, I, I'm here, I'm going to present um, uh, a subject that has been of, of great interest uh, to us here in the Faculty of Medicine, uh, because um, I think we are a, a bit late coming to this, to this uh, issue. Uh, that involves uh, how do we handle uh, the, the, the vast amount of data that uh, all of us uh, as researchers uh, involved in, uh, in several uh, research projects uh, handle the, that data and how it is going to be used, collected, stored and reused uh, for uh, for uh, in, in 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 compliance with all of the all of the the, the uh, all of the uh, regulatory issues that uh, that currently involve uh, data management research data management. Um, first of all, I'm here representing a, a group the, of of a task force of people that that are uh, involved in this in this issue here in the faculty of medicine i'm going to 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 to, to try to to uh, to convey what uh, what is the main reasons why we are doing uh, research data management uh, worldwide this is a, a movement that uh, that is uh, this, this is part of a, a wider policy involving the open science initiative uh, afterwards i'm going to to to, to present some some particular uh, uh, tools on how to do this data management and uh, and afterwards, and uh, to present what is being done currently in the, over here in the Faculty of Medicine. So first of all, I don't know if uh, have you all of you have uh, ever heard about with the Open Science Initiative. This is a, a, a practice that uh, that is part of the, a wider policy involving not only uh, the European Commission but also worldwide. There's a, a movement to 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 uh, enforce the researchers to adopt uh, open science uh, an open science methodology, mostly involving uh, research that has been that is being done, uh, funded by public bodies. Uh, in 2015, with in 2014. Uh, was when we first started hearing uh, in a more effective way uh, about open science, because we started uh, realizing that a lot of research has been, fund has been being funded by, by public bodies that was not adequately, adequately uh, disseminated uh, through the, to the other, uh, to the general public and to other researchers. And this was not obviously not very productive, because we have been funding a lot of research that uh, that 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 should be made public, uh, and that we should prevent refunding it, and obviously because if 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 most of the research is being funded by public funds, the logical and fair uh, is that that research should be made available to us taxpayers that have been funding that, that, that kind of research. Obviously, other issues also revolve around open science, 
that involves the, the redistribution, the reuse, and the reproduction of the data that, that the, the scientists use to, to convey their, their, their messages. So this is a movement that aims to, to, to make science a much more accessible, more efficient, a more dem democratic, and a more transparent way of doing science, of doing research. So obviously there's a lot of advantages. Uh, ultimately that the, the funding that is more than is much more efficient and that the, the, the research that is being done is, is, is more easily ver verifiable by other researchers because when we, uh, not only when we make our articles more uh, accessible and open for other researchers to, to, to consult and to use, uh, but also when our data, the data that was that was generated, that that makes those articles, that they, makes those scientific assumptions, is also made available, we can verify if the conclusions that were made were uh, were were uh, were um, were fair and were accurate. And that was that uh, regard when when we when we when we look at the scientific principle, it's one of the main uh, the main principles of doing science is that my uh, my conclusions can be easily or can be reproduced considering the same conditions in which they they were made. So obviously there's a, there's a vast economic and social impact of of uh, of this uh, of this movement. And obviously, there's there's a, a, an intention to accelerate uh, research. When uh, again, I wouldn't I I I I, I wouldn't go. Uh, I, I I fear of going back to to, to the the item of, of COVID. But when we have data that is uh, more easily accessible to a lot of researchers. Uh, there's a there's a tendency to accelerate conclusions. There's a tendency to 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 gather uh, uh, the the scientific community around a, a particular uh, a particular uh, uh, scientific item, the subject. So when we make data more accessible, we have a, a greater tendency to involve a lot more uh, researchers in those in those uh, those subjects. Um, Obviously, there are benefits for different parties, depending on the, on the, on the kind of stakeholder that we are. Obviously, for the general public, it's a, a lot more difficult to understand some of the some of the, some of the specific jargon of the of of that item. Uh, but obviously, uh, in in all fairness, they are the ones that ultimately would benefit from this access to to information. And it gives them the opportunity to have some sort of influence on the, on the on the on the set of the priority that, that are going to be researched. Obviously, in terms of the organizations, there's a lot of uh, a lot of intention to gather the much as much information as possible to to determine if what the the organization is funding is actually uh, uh, correct and is and is and is uh, what they are paying for so open science movement has a lot of uh, different uh, different uh, uh, components that goes from uh, from open data to to an open access and uh, and uh, and open infrastructures um, so what is research data management? Uh, RDM refers, it, it conveys about, it, it, it concerns good practice in planning and collecting and storing and sharing and prefer, in preserving the data, all kinds of data that is generated in any kind of research. And it, this, this goes from the, a, simple, uh, um, a simple Excel file to a PowerPoint to a publication. Um, the RDM is the process of of providing the uh, the adequate labeling and uh, and storage and access to data in all stages of the research project. 
Okay, basically, what <laughs> I showed this presentation afterwards. But it says it's a it's a it's a very interesting video about how how the, how are the three the three main issues regarding uh, regarding data, how is, how how this can be uh, uh, shared. So. One of the main issues now, and one of the main motivations for for having the our research data published uh, and and made made freely available, uh, regards the 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 funding the regards funding, because nowadays in some in some uh, in some funding institutions are now increasingly uh, asking for the for the for the researchers to make those that that data available uh, so they can verify if what we of, of our conclusions are, are are correct so the main uh, the main uh, advantages of of uh, providing uh, access to our data involves keeping our research data safe and secure uh, because for the most part what we are now what we are what we are now using as a, as a, as storage are pen drives or google drives or or some other sort of of uh, of storage that usually uh, goes goes stray when when we lose our computer or when when a researcher leaves uh, uh, the institution, um, the other the other advantage is to increase research efficiency by by providing funders with the uh, with the notion on how much data and what kind of data is actually stored in uh, in uh, in our uh, in our uh, in our by our researchers to improve our integrity and to make our research outputs more more visible. So one of the main uh, uh, objectives is also to ensure that this data is accessible and shareable, and uh, also to prevent retraction. Not only this is one one case. This is one case where where a, 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 um, a publication from the New England Journal of Medicine was retracted because the the underlying data that presented that was part of that project of part of that article. Was not could could not be located, so the the reviewers were not able to determine if the conclusions of that paper would be rep reproducible or not. Uh, nowadays, we are now facing in in many in many uh, in many journals where um, where a data management plan is is being asked. As a, as a precondition in order to submit a publication. Uh, in, in other cases, when we are doing um, uh, an application for funding, also they are asking researchers to identify and to, and to provide a plan on how, uh, how the researcher is going to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to manage the data that is going to, to be completed. Uh, to be to be co collected. So, also one of the advantages is obviously, and I think this is one of the major parts of the motivation for for researchers, is complying with the policies that funders and journals to uh, are going to have been doing it to to, uh, to 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 require our our everyday functioning. Um, for instance, the. the in, in, in uh, the International Committee of, of Medical Journal Editors says that it's also an ethical obligation uh, and, and a responsible obligation to share the data that was uh, generated by, 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 clinical by clinical trials because all the participants that were involved in the clinical trials put themselves at, at risk and all of this information has to be shareable. Um, the FCT, the Portuguese Science for for uh, for uh, Science Foundation, says that uh, in some some of the of the of the newer research uh, research applications should should include a data management plan, 
and that the researchers have the, the obligation to share uh, as much as possible the data with the community, the database that that was uh, that was generated as a result of this funding in Horizon Europe and in Horizon 20. In Horizon 2020, it was a more a, a, a recommendation. Nowadays, in Horizon Europa, uh, we all the researchers have a, a, as a mandatory uh, a compliance to, to, to deliver a data management plan and to provide the information on how the, the data that they used were uh, were were made were 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 what the information and what outputs were made were used in order to produce that data and also researchers have to uh, have to develop those those digital the, that digital research data in uh, in accordance with the fair principles you know data has to be findable has to be accessible has to be interoperable and has to be reusable which is a tall order to to to, for, to fulfill um, for for common researchers. Uh, nonetheless, some requirements are mandatory, but with some exceptions. And most of us, I assume that that handle uh, data that that's also um, very sensitive because it involves uh, information about about uh, about patients. Um, and uh, and researchers should also uh, use and, and should also open their access to data in in the repositories that follow the, the principle as open as possible and as close as necessary. How how this can be done um, involves involves respecting the, the the data and respecting the principles. That is used in terms of sharing um, health data. Yeah, may I interrupt? We have here a question at the Pinjam Hall. Uh, someone asking, what is nowadays the common practice in terms of data sharing? And when it happens, how is it done? So there are very local, there are local uh, principles uh, in that we have to comply with those principles. Um, we have a I'm going to address that issue. We have a GDPR that is that is that is used to cover most of the the obligations that we have to to assume in terms of of, of sharing data, and afterwards, when we come back to local local entities, for instance, there are specific items that we we have to include. Those, those are very large and very strict rules. In order to to accommodate um, to accommodate all of those all of those uh, all, all of those items to, to 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 comply, for instance, nowadays now we are in in the faculty of medicine we are handling um, health data that comes from from uh, health research data that has some specific um, some specific uh, questions issues. Regarding the privacy of, of of that sensitive data, data from genetics, data from clinical data, have all come down to uh, a, a condition where, uh, besides the anonymity of data, and, bes and besides being being uh, being uh, stored in specific repositories, they also have. Um, specific conditions in terms of informed consent they have to be complied uh, what I, what i can say is that in terms of european uh, general european uh, regulations we have the gdpr but afterwards nationally there are specific uh, conditions that have to be uh, that have to be complied they have to be served uh, in order to respect the local uh, legislation. Uh, in terms of European projects, or in terms of projects that involve the sharing of data, even research data, uh, in different countries, there has to be a specific partner that, that tackles those issues uh, uh, when they come across it. Um, and usually, 
uh, this, this is a very specialized service that if we have partners from three member states, from three member states, uh, all the three member states are going to have specific regulations in terms of this data uh, uh, sharing, in, in which conditions, uh, where and by whom. And who, but in terms of data management plan, we have to include those specific, even if it is in general terms, we have to, to, to include those specific, um, those specific uh, items, issues. So this doesn't need any sound, so I can... <laughs> this is a bit about to, talking about the research uh, life cycle in terms of, of data management. So you have here um, six conditions in terms of planning the research, collecting data. In terms of planning the research, the data uh, activities involve not only designing research, but also doing the upon data uh, 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 to plan the data management, sharing consent, and so on. In terms of collecting data, the specific activities that, that regard collecting data, capturing not only data, but also the metadata. And uh, uh, metadata is the information, the additional information that we use to label the, the, the sort of information that is going to be collected. In terms of processing and analyzing data, we have to, a lot of other uh, activities, uh, including citation. In terms of publishing and sharing data, we have to establish copyright, we have to publish, we have to promote the, the data, we have to... to, to uh, to, to select an appropriate access in terms of preserving data. We have other issues, including migrating, selecting the best format, storing it, uh, preserving it, and curating data. In fact, the, this is one of the, 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 the new jobs of, of the 21st century it involves curating data. And obviously, reusing data. Who among us has not reused data Collected by 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 initial primary uh, uh, initial primary objectives. Um, so this, in terms of data size life cycle, uh, Harvard Medical School implemented a model where uh, where you can see uh, all of these all of these uh, activities that go beyond get, that go from planning and designing the, the, the data process to access and reusing it. Eventually it's following uh, approximately the, the, same, the same steps. But in, just, just to, to let you know that um, the biomedical data life, science, life cycle has certain steps that we as an organization, in terms of faculty of medicine, and we, as researchers, have to be aware of. So the DMP, the data management plan, is one of the issues that, that is one of the tools that we use that is most important, and it is one of the, and, and it is one of the, the, the major, the major uh, issues, uh, and one of the major activities that we use to handle those Okay. This is one of the, 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 main, the main tools that we use to, to enforce the, this policy. So this is a, a, a formal plan, a document that has to be delivered, and it has all the information about how the way that, that we are going to manage the data from a research project, and the, it, it is a dam, dynamic because uh, although that we, we plan how we are going to collect this data and are going, and are going to reuse it, sometimes um, in terms of the project, uh, 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 when, we, when we add different uh, variables or when we decide on where we're going to store it, um, how, how the data is going to be processed, it, it also has the, the we also have the opportunity to change this data management plan. Uh, this DMP should provide information not only on the general description of the data set, but also on which kind of standard 
of, uh, of information on in what kind of metadata the additional information about labeling of the of the variables is going to be provided. Also, these data sets are also published and also have a, a, an identifier similar to the DOI in terms of the DOI in terms of the of the articles. So when we publish a data set, it's also a citable item. And I think this is uh, attractive for, for the researchers because it, it's a way of, of uh, improving our, our reputation and improving our profile as a researcher. And, uh, and it's also a way to provide for future collaborations because when I, when I say that I have a data set on patients that are um, of, a, of a particular condition, medical condition, this, this is one of the issues of that video that I was unable to reproduce. Uh, when, I have, when I say that I have a data set on, the, on that kind of patients, this makes me attractive for other researchers and for other collaborations. And that's all, that also provides for an opportunity for cert certain issues that I was unable to uh, address it provides me uh, with an opportunity for a collaboration with a person that could help me identify those kinds of, of problems. Also, uh, the, the DMP allows me to, to become the curator of my, my own data. That is to say that I do, not, uh, I do not give up on the ownership of my data, but it makes me responsible for preserving that data for the for others to know. In in some ways, this is a, a more a more accountable way of saying that I got funded to do that research to collect the data that data, and that makes me responsible for managing for managing who has access to it, and 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 for me to ensure that that data is not lost. When I when I leave the institution or when I lose my computer, so over here I'm going to present my favorite uh, tool to create uh, DMPs. It's called DMP Online. So this is uh, this is DMP Online. This is one of the one the, one of the, the for me one of the better tools to to create DMPs. We have uh, okay. You create a, a profile and so on, and you, and and, uh, and it, this 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 guides us to through the process of creating a a, um, a data management plan. So over here we are going to create uh, well, so. so we're going to create a a, a project about uh, heart failure. Okay, I can do the do this. I can select the University of Porto, or I can select no organization at all. And one of the one of the better one of the great things about DMP online is that there are certain uh, there are um, uh, templates for for DMPs. So, for instance, uh, the FCT uh, uses. The, the the basically the same uh, the same template from from the Netherlands organization for scientific research from the NWO, but uh, but if we are in working in the UK and we, you you use the Medical Research Council, it also has a, a different kind of template. They, they basically are the same with specific uh, with specific differences, but in general. In general terms, they all uh, they all uh, they all uh, address the same uh, the same issues. So, for instance, let's create a key uh, uh, a DMP based on uh, based on the DMWO, and what is what it asks us to do is to um, to 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 for instance to add an abstract to say when our project is going to start or end. To provide an estimate, to see, to say who is the funder, uh, to see if this is plan, planned or funded or has been denied. Uh, you can provide a new, a new URL, URL or not. Again, but contributors, we can add here a specific person with an ORCID, 
with a certain affiliation, what kind of role it is what it has. Um, an overview, it, it provides us some information on, on the kind of data that uh, a DMP based on this template is going to ask of us. So for instance, you can now see what kind of, who is the person, what's the, what's the project number, uh, if new data is going to be produced, how much storage uh, our project will require, what kind of documentation will accompany this data, where it is going to be stored, um, if, if, uh, if uh, we are going to have ownership of the data, uh, how, how is it going to, the intellectual property rights, how is it, this going to be, to be managed, if uh, the, the data is going to be selected for long-term preservation, uh, is it going to be made available for reuse, how is, in, which, in what conditions, how much is going to be cost, or is, is going to cost, and so on. Uh, so this is the, an overview of the kind of information that is going to be provided. And afterwards, we have a, okay, a, a relatively simple uh, uh, template that helps us through the whole process of producing the, 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 the DMP. Uh, also, we can, we, can, uh, we can look at some, some reference uh, of some public uh, DMPs uh, for instance, over here we have a, a professor person uh, from 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 the Delft University the, as a, a PhD uh, doing. He, he presented the, the DMP for its uh, uh, PhD project, and um, the DMP that this person uh, provides. Um, who created, where it's from, when it started, the person, the type of data that is going to be produced in terms of, of, uh, of the, the, the PhD, how will it be collected, what's the purpose, where is it locally <clears throat> stored, who can have access to the data, how much space uh, storage, what kind of documentation will come in? So you have a gist of, of what is a DMP and uh, how is it going to be, uh, how can it be produced? Uh, and how basically is, is stating in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a document, the kind of, um, the kind of, of information that is going to be uh, is going to be uh, is going to be produced. This these two these two tools I, I, I recommend because I think they are very good. So also there are in some cases in some funders uh, and in some uh, journals you also have templates pre pre uh, pre uh, prepared templates to uh, to to include them. Uh, over here it's very similar to the to that tool online tool only in in. In a, in a local format, so to speak, for you to fill out. Also, sometimes there are, pub, uh, there are uh, public DMPs like these ones that, that we saw, that in specific, uh, in specific uh, areas of expertise, we can access them and look at those DMPs and in some ways copy what makes sense to our, to our, uh, to our original plan. So, uh, one part that gives a lot of uh, that is a lot of work involves metadata, uh, and metadata. When we come across a, a research plan and we come across across a, a, a data set, we know that um, we know that metadata is what it, it's the thing that usually makes sense to uh, to an outsider in terms of understanding what what kind of data is going to be is is there is stored so good metadata in in, in some ways is, is better than the actual data set because it, it helps us understand use and, and share it and make sense of the the, the data that is going to be um, that is going to be uh, used 
Um, there are standards in terms of the kind of data and the kind of metadata that is going to be, uh, that can be uploaded. There are different metadata schemes that all that follow these two, these two uh, uh, standards that I uh, obviously am not going to, to address them. Because we can say that metadata is data about the data. Data about the data, exactly. Yes. So a lot of curation. Um, for instance, if you are working in the in the, in the area of my biomedicine, uh, Harvard Medical School has has a, a good library and a, a good a good a good way of of, uh, of describing how medical how, how biomedical data can be can be stored and what what kind of data can be can be used to label that that uh, that data set. Don't be uh, don't be alarmed with all of these links because all of them are specific for uh, different kinds of areas of expertise. Obviously, some recommendations about collecting and creating data regarding file naming conventions um, can also be used in those uh, in those uh, in those uh, websites. And also, obviously, we all come across this, I think, in a, in a daily basis regarding version control. You know? And the important things about when, when we are managing a project and we are, uh, we are assigned as the, as the data experts is to clearly define the convention that is going to use to, to label the documents. Uh, and it's very important to assign a specific person inside a, a project uh, that is responsible for 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 the documentation. And this is, I think, one of the most important uh, aspects of data management because when that person has that kind of responsibility, uh, it has to ensure from from start to to finish the kind of. Um, the kind of labeling, the kind of control that is going to, to be to be used. One of the best practices that is recommended it involves uh, developing a readme file to, to describe different variables, the different measurement units, the formats, and data types. This is a this is the best practice in terms of uh, of creating that uh, that that data. As, as one of the in in, in, in reply to, to one of the questions, the GDPR involves the, the general uh, inf the general regulation regarding data protection for the, for European researchers. Um, I don't know if you ever heard about Open Air. Open Air is an initiative from the, the European Commission uh, that involves that is that is I would say the infrastructure. Uh, underlying this general movement of open science, it is a, a, a an excellent platform for for uh, for sharing, for uh, for collecting and storaging and and uh, and, uh, and uh, disseminating data from uh, from open data, open research data. They have a very good uh, focus and a very good uh, uh, information about how this data can be used mainly in terms of the sensitive data that, that regards health, health and patients. Um, and how this is going to be stored, for instance, in the, in the, in the, in the University of Porto, um, people from UPA Digital are, are handling or are trying to, to uh, and they are working on how to develop a safe repository for for the research data. Because in the University of Porto, we have a, a, a repository, uh, an open data repository, but at the moment it does not fully comply with the with the with the with the, the, the existing regulatory issues. So uh, we are working on it. We, not myself, but the University of Porto is working on 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 making a, a on creating a, a local repository for all the research data in in the University of Porto. Nonetheless, in the, in this website in in R three data, um, 
there are, it is a list of all the repositories that exist for specific sciences. And we have specially dedicated repositories for health data. And over there, in those repositories, we can access, and in some ways, I would say that we can store some kind of information about our, 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 our data. And we can use this as, as a way to, 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 to provide information in terms of our DMP for uh, where our, our data is going to be stored. Nonetheless, we can also say in terms of our DMP that the data is going to be locally stored and, the, and that the, uh, other people can access it using certain conditions. Um, so over here, we have a, a comparison of the different repositories that, that exist. And as you can see, for instance, my two favorite ones are Dataverse, that is used by, by Harvard Medical School, and Zenodo, that is funded by, uh, by the European Commission. But as you can see, they have, uh, they have certain specificities that go from from size of the times of the size of the of the data set to the kinds of controls that users and administrators can have to uh, the access the kind of access that that uh, outside uh, outside the uh, users can have and obviously in terms of the cost in terms of the data deposition costs and and the kind of fees that that can be asked of you as as uh, as users of these repositories. In, in terms of what we are doing here in Faculty of Medicine, uh, since uh, September of 2021, um, myself as 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 the the person in charge of knowledge management here in, in the Faculty of Medicine, and. Um, Make the the the, the I, I, I set the, the objective to to have this kind of the, the, the data management service uh, up and running uh, in 2022 in this year because uh, I know that this is one of the requirements that our researchers need in order to to to, to tackle the the. the the requirements for, from from the funding agencies and from the publication and from the journals. So uh, we set a, a project that, that goes that has several steps. We follow the the same uh, the same or basically the same uh, uh, project that was initially intended in the in the, in the University of Minho. So the, docu the documentation service in the university in Minho is, in my opinion, the one that in Portugal is the most is more advanced in terms of data management, and uh, they set out um, a certain uh, uh, a lot of activities, and we are trying to follow them and adequate them to to our institution as best as we can, and 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 uh, what or what, what we think it works. So nowadays, we we are currently analyzing the the what what is our 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 uh, our, uh, our ecosystem in terms of what are the requirements from our researchers in terms of data management. If we uh, will need or not uh, um, a local storage, uh, or in terms of services, if our researchers need curation. And uh, and uh, and services in terms of developing their own DMPs. So we are here in stage one. Just we are just in stage one. We are we are we are going to 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 do an inquiry and trying to 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 map the the necessities of our researchers in terms of their storage, in terms of the services they're going to need, in terms of uh, of the procedure, in terms of data management. In order to to provide for and to construct a framework in terms of IT, in terms of support services, in terms of, of curation, and uh, one of the most important parts in terms of bioethics, bioethics either in terms of of uh, the the compliance with with uh, with privacy, but also in terms of data and 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 the reuse of data for uh, from. Uh, 
from from research. Uh, I know uh, early on that we're going to have three kinds of services that we are going to provide, either in terms of education, providing courses and workshops uh, in terms of, of developing this kind of uh, of, uh, of data of uh, information about data management either in terms of the specialized expertise, in terms of curation or, or developing a, a DMP help, and in terms of, of the, the curation as a service, in terms of storage, uh, vault, uh, or, or, um, or, or, or local, lo local services. So over the, uh, uh, in, we are, I think we are uh, on the brink of, of going back to, of going to, to phase two in terms of implementation and providing and providing um, uh, accompanying services, either in terms of before, during the, the project, afterwards and, and providing um, support after, after the, the, the research is done how to share uh, and archive our, our data. So this group involves a lot of people, uh, since Ricardo Duarte from the archive, Filipe Torres from the, the library, Camila from, from statistics, Pedro Marques from, from the IT, uh, Monica Correa from, uh, from uh, bioethics, Ana Margarita from, uh, from security, Milides and, and also from, from support. So. Thank you. I think it's all the time that we have now. Please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Um, I think it's a lot of information. We have a question from Chris. Please go ahead. Um, thank you very much. Um, and Professor was uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. And uh, the fact that research will be available for review it's very very important i just want to ask about the um retraction you said uh, to prevent retractions from from taking place because some retractions are done because of loss of data i was also looking at retraction that could be done because of maybe um wrong findings how will that go Exactly. That's that's one of the main uh, the, the main advantages, and one of the things that are are motivating uh, the, the publishers to to ask researchers to uh, upload the the data for for reviewers to uh, analyze it and to uh, and to to possibly reach other kinds of of, of conclusions. Because, for instance, uh, a few years ago, uh, I could easily uh, fabricate results, and there are a lot of cases that that were that were uh, that were found out that that researchers fabricated the results uh, purely 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 by, by 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 making up data. In order to prevent this. Uh, this this is one of the, the, the this is one of the the, the the measures that the publishers are, are are implementing to prevent the complete fabrication of data. But again, one of the the other things that is going to happen is that, as a scientist, we all say that we have to provide the all the conditions that we have that that makes the our experiments. Um, uh, uh, that make our experiments that um, that that make our experiments, uh, experiments um, the same conditions that we used in order to reach those conclusions, and that obviously also includes the kind of data that we that we collected, that provides other researchers with the possibility of with the same data reaching different conclusions. And when other, re other researchers reach different conclusions with the same conditions, with the same data, we can have either one of the thing, one of, one of, one of two conditions. Either our conclusions were completely wrong, or there's simply an, an error in our, in our judgment of our conditions. So what, what these kinds of measures in terms of open sciences does 
is to increase the communication, increase the, the, the general knowledge about data, about science, and provides other researchers with the possibility of reaching other conclusions with, with our data. Not, uh, in, and this does not imply that our findings were misleading on purpose, were simply an error of, on our part, were simply one way we, we were biased in some ways to, to, to interpret those data in some way. But this, this provides other researchers with the possibility of, uh, of uh, reaching other conclusions with the same, with, with the same data. I'll just, just finish by saying thank you once again very much, Professor Tony Soares, for making us aware of this important topic of health research data management, for informing us about the existence of useful tools in this regard, and for sharing the experience here at the Faculty of Medicine. So, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.